Evening, ladies and gents. Simon Brown here doing this evening's presentation. So just a quick uh, recap, I suppose, in a sense, the concept behind momentum is that stocks that are moving tend to move. Those trends tend to continue. We're seeing it, we've seen it with stocks like uh, SAB, NASPAS, Capitech, Kelgro, and on the downside, we've seen it with pretty much any resource stock. We can argue the reasons behind Frankly, as a momentum trader, those don't bother me. They've got momentum, those stocks. And those trends tend to continue significantly more than you would ever imagine. And, and that's the key point of them, that they, they, they massively protracted either up or down, depending which way it's going. So what we've got is the top 40 in the mid cap. From top 40, we buy five best stocks from the top 14 from the mid cap, the top six. It is simply a case of, and you'll see the process as I do it in a moment, I do a scan on those particular stocks and I simply buy the ones that are top of the pile. So I scan for a 12 month move for those 40 shares in the top 40 and I buy the five that are top. I don't look at the, the, the chart patterns. I don't look at the fundamentals. I just buy those that are top of the pile. As simple as that. We've been running five in the top 40, six in the mid cap benchmarks respectively, the two ETFs. We hold them for a year. So I've got a cash portfolio, which I've put 100,000 into each. And we run that from 1 March to 28 February, uh, closing at the end of the tax year and then opening in the new year. We used to do it calendar year, but the new year was not a great time to be having to sell a pile of stocks and buy them in the middle of your holiday and hangovers and everything else. What we've been doing is every quarter uh, uh, in, in, in from March and then June, September, and now December, we've now picked up the other stocks. And what I'm saying by picked up is we do the scan. So if you've come along now and you're saying, well, should I buy the stocks you bought in March? I can say, well, you can buy those. Alternatively, here are the stocks to buy in December. New bunch every quarter, as I said, the March 15 is what I've invested in. We did a June, we did a September, we're now doing the December one and the monthly updates every uh, month. It'll go up tomorrow, although you will see the content. Of what I've uh, put together for this webcast will be in that post tomorrow under blog just one lap dot com. So these were the stocks. So this was the scan we would have done uh, on, when would it have been? It would have been, that would have been 1st of March because it was a Sunday. So we simply scanned the best stocks in order of performance, Mr. Price, MediClinic, Netcare, RMI, and First Rand. Uh, those were the top five. So we buy those top five. We buy them equal weight. We stick them in the portfolio. And there they are, what they've done from 1 March. Uh, live cash portfolio. I took the screenshot at just after quarter past five this afternoon. Not looking pretty. Uh, down 13.7. That's including costs, but excluding dividends. There's 2,600 Rand in cash there. And just a point, because I've funded with 100,000, my return is still over more than just the mere 13% because I funded over a two year period. I did 50,000, then 20 then 30,000 over, over a period. So that is the, the live portfolio as it closed today. These are stocks that I purchased on uh, 2nd of March, which was the Monday in the opening auction and how they've done subsequent. Short answer, not lacquer. Um, Mr. Price is the one that's really, really hurting us. Netcare and first round not doing so lacquer either. But uh, if we look at the total movements, none of them, not out of the five, not one is green, not lacquer. Um, in the mid cap space, Fortress Bees, Telcom, Capitech, Pioneer, uh, Fashini Group and Resilient. A couple of points, we already had Telcom from the previous year, so we hold it over. What I do is I actually sell my Telcom down on that on that purchase day, 2nd of March. Reason being is that Telcom was overweight, so we sell it down to be equal weight in the portfolio. Um, and Capitech has subsequently moved into top 40, but it's in this fund, so we leave it. Although when we scan this evening, Capitech will likely pop up in the top 40 fund uh, uh, list because it's in the top 40, and I think its movement might have been enough. Um, and yeah, uh, Capitech also I hold in my long-term portfolio. That's why there's a double star there. And if I go to the performance here, look, I mean, both these portfolios, 100K, one's at 113, one's not 180. Mid-cap's done significantly better. We're up 22%. That number is skewed because of telecom. Um, but we've only got one negative stock, and that's Fashini Group. We've got Capitech, uh, Fortress Bees up nicely, very liquid, so it's a mission. Uh, Pioneer, oof nudging ahead. Uh, resilient, 
telecom are doing well, but that 96% is not right. As I said, we got hangovers. These are what I paid for them the year before last. And then we throw 2,800 rand of dividends. We've got a fairly chunky looking portfolio there. If I crunch them, so those are the stocks. If I if I just chart the performance, this is top 40. Uh, green line is the momentum. As we update every month, the yellow line is top is the index, the top 40. We were ahead first month. And then since then, we have not been ahead. We have just been behind the entire absolute way. At one point, it's been we've been behind modestly. Um, and then what happened in September was index went up. We continued lower, and we pretty much haven't managed to recover at that point. So, it's, yeah, it, it, it's an ugly picture. Now, if you're the green line here, which is what we are, this is an ugly picture. Our outperformance or underperformance relative, so if we take our minus 11.7, less there, 1.2, which is negative, we are 10.5% behind. That is a nasty number. That's a massive outperformance. I mean, it, it absolutely is. Um, this is from 1 March, and uh, it's just not looking pretty at all. In the mid-cap space, uh, much better picture. Uh, we've outperformed the whole way. We can see May and June when the index was pulling down a fair bit, we were coming too. But then what happened was that June, July, August, the index kind of sideways, we were pulling up. September index down, we went higher, and now we've pulled back now as well, not as sharply. What we have is an outperformance of 24.1%, which is a humongous outperformance, absolutely humongous outperformance. So the mid cap doing awesome, top 40 doing ugly. I mean, so they're the numbers. Um, the the top 40 is, is under its benchmark, and our aim here is to beat our benchmark. It's not to do a positive return. In the mid cap space, if we were minus six and the benchmark's minus 12, we say like, hey, we're winning. And this includes all costs, dividends, everything's there. So it's complete legit. Obviously, benchmark, no costs and the like. But the top 40 underwater, the mid cap nicely ahead. Um, broadly, if we put the two together, and it's not a fair analogy, but we would be minus 10 on the benchmark and around flat, excuse me, uh, on the two portfolios together. So we would be ahead but ahead in, in zero rands, which would, well, I mean, I know that's ahead and it's true and everything else. It's just not a not fun to be ahead when you're actually not making money. You want to be in the positive. So that's painting a mixed picture. Top 40 doing ugly, mid cap, we're happy with mid cap. If we distill it down, so we started these in January 2013 with 50,000 cash. We added another 20,000 in uh, Feb of last year because we then moved it to February. And we added another uh, pile of cash in just uh, beginning of this March. Now, another 30. What we can see, and, and, and you can look at the individual numbers, but if you look at total return, uh, top 40 momentum, 28.7 after costs, benchmark 32.6. So we're even behind in total return since 1 Jan 2013. And there's, I mean, I pause because there's nothing to say. That's 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 really ugly. Uh, momentum on the mid cap, we're 128.8, and the benchmark is 18.9. So we are we are 100 miles ahead in that particular space. If you check down, you can see that the um, top 40 has been beating us, beat us in that year there. We won here. And now we are losing there. So the top 40s had a bit of a rough time. Thank goodness for that one outperform the year ending uh, February 15. Uh, mid cap, pretty much we've been smashing it the whole way. Uh, and we have absolutely been beating it the whole way with outperformance of 20 or 30 percent. Um, and hence the significant outperformance over the longer period. Just a note, as I said, we were doing calendar years up until end of December 13. We then moved to, to uh, uh, tax years. So from in Jan and Feb, of 2014, uh, uh, we basically left the money in cash. So let's go and have a look, see of what the stocks are. Folks, if you've got questions, bring them through. I've got a call in my data. So this process takes a minute or two because my... So what we do is you say we want yearly returns. We're going to have to make that yearly return because we don't have 30 November data. I'm going to make it to 27 November data. We're going to filter it in the sense that we're only interested in the top 40 stocks. Um, and we say OK, and we say Show, and boom, there it is. So you know, it's literally that simple in a sense. And I'm going to quickly grab a screenshot here. 
these are the stocks that we're interested in. So the top five stocks are Breit, Capitec, Mondi. There are two Mondi, so you only buy one, Naspass, and Capco. Those would be the five stocks that you put into it. Let's go back to there and add those stocks in. So it is Breit, uh, wrong keyboard. It is Breit, Capitec, Mondi, you can do P or L, there's no real difference. I typically do the cheaper because I might get a few extra shares. Um, Naspass and Capco, which is CCO. On the mid cap space, same process, but now we go and filter on mid cap and we say show let's grab the screenshot now what we can see here is that there's well actually no, there's only one that carries over so the stocks are fortress bees psg uh cap uh net one sappy and those are the the the, the six stocks that come in here let's stick those in so fortress bees fbb i'm pretty sure uh psg uh kap um Net, is it? No, it's, it's NT1, I'm pretty sure is the code. Uh, SAPI, wow, to think I would have to buy SAPI. And then Rock Castle. And the point is, I mean, what's my comment there? I don't like SAPI. I've never liked SAPI. I never want to own SAPI. But if SAPI is the stock that's that's up and happening, then then that's the stock I would, I would have to buy. If we look at, if we just go back to this screen, a second what we can see is so we own fortress b and it's by a long way the best winner so we're quite happy with that uh we've got resilient in there as well um and then our other picks are are lurking down capitech is not there because it moved into the top 40 hence capitech not in that space anymore so those are the stocks for now so so if you're looking to to take a position in this portfolio essentially you've got two options you can sync with me and go buy the March stocks, if you so wish. Um, and 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 the question is, is that any good? So I've gone and run the numbers. And in truth, it, you know, sometimes it's fine buying March in December or September, whatever. Sometimes it's better to go and buy the new list. If you'd rather buy the new list, there they are. And we will do this every, so if you buy the December list and you sync with what we call December 15, we will next December update on the last day and, and of, of, of November, let you know what those stocks are so that you can you know, keep them in sync. Of course, you can do the same there, absolutely no problem as well. Just some quick details. No paid, we always sell our no paid letters. The brokerage typically hurts us. What I do, my stockbroker on the last day of the no paid sells into the market, doesn't charge brokerage, and then credits me with the cash. So I typ typically take that route. Um, but I always take uh, uh, no paid. And then the question I always get asked is what about stop loss? And particularly when you look at, for example, Mr. Price right now, um, where's my stop loss? And short answer, don't have one. Now, you know, people will jump up and down and say that's insane, but 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 bear me out on it. So I've crunched the numbers, and and there's two things that I've crunched. One is is 12 months the best time frame? Should I do this over a shorter period, three maybe six months, or should I do it over a longer period, two years, three years, or five years? And I can tell you quantifiably, 12 months is the best time frame. I get the best results doing a 12 month scan and then holding for 12 months. The ABSA Momentum ETF, for example, uh, does it for three months and, and they've been struggling. They've come a bit more right in the last few months, but they've had a slightly tough time of it. The 12 months, definitely better. And then what about stop loss? That means I hold the stock. I don't stop loss at all. And here's why. So the stock, and let's take a, a, an example. Let me pull up my pen. Let me make it a good color. So stock's falling. And I have my stop loss somewhere. Do I have it at 5%, 10%, 15%, 20%? And I get stopped out somewhere. So I lock in, I, I, I prevent the rest of that loss. But what happens if it recovers again? And, and I've seen that. So, so Mr. Price, I mean, so the one year Woolies was down 22% and ended the year in the green. In other words, I would have locked in a loss on Woolies of either 5, 10, 15, or 20%, wherever my stop loss was. And then I would have then said, well, and I wouldn't have got there. In the end, we ended up with a modest return on it. At the moment, Mr. Price is sitting right the way down here. And undoubtedly, in hindsight, it's like, this is lacquer. But Mr. Price, this is the first time we've really been taken to the cleaners on a stock. And I stress, we've still got three months to go. Yeah, in uh, three months, a lot can happen in, in three months. It's also, so then you say, well, why don't you, you know, do it on, you know, kick it out at 5% uh, down and pick up 
almost a reserve stock. So the stock that was next in line and pop that in. And I've crunched some numbers there. Um, more than anything, it pushes my costs up without really significantly, and in most times it actually hurts my returns. But it, it, again, it, it, you know, I can't find a single way. And the, the original paper that this was researched on, that I did this from, um, published in the FT in about 2007, they used the FTSE 100 constituents, and they, they, they did it in the, you buy and hold. You, so they did a little different. They were going short as well. There's complications around that. But short answer is it absolutely works as it is. No stop loss, scan for a year, hold for a year. So then some thoughts, and I would appreciate feedback, whether we have the feedback now or whether whether you want to email me or come and chat to me at, at, at the JSC on Tuesday when I'm doing the event there or, or Durban this week, or whenever I'm fine, drop me an email or something like that. So three points, I'll put them out and then I'll go into them. Um, to merge the two portfolios into a single portfolio, to buy top 15, rather than currently we buy top five and top six, which gives us 11 stocks, and to use top 100 as our benchmark. Now. Let's start at the bottom. The JSC is going through a big uh, index rejig. A part of that index rejig is going to be a, an introduction of a top 100 index. I think we're going to start seeing a lot of traction around that. I think in time, it's going to become our top 40 in the many senses. We'll see ETFs issued around it. They're still taking consultations until 16 December, so they haven't yet decided. I don't have an ETA for when it will happen. I'm kind of hoping 1st of March because it ties in with so with, with with my rest of the stuff. But in essence, it gives us a nice clean benchmark. Um, what it also means, so the new rules in the JSC, Capitec, although it is one of the 40 biggest stocks, is they're going to remove free float. So because of the PSG holding in Capitec, Capitec will fall down into um, the mid cap. So we've actually got a top 40 stock in size sitting in the mid cap. I'm quite happy with that. I don't have a problem with that, but it, it, it's a little bit weird when, when you know, in essence, we'd be then putting Capitec back into our mid-cap portfolio. So I want to benchmark on the top 100. If I, and, and then I use that as my universe. So then what I do is instead of scanning, as I did a moment ago, top 40 and then mid-cap indices, I just scan top 100. So I just go and do those top 100 stocks and I just go and buy those. Um, and then what we say is, well, okay, for, if I'm doing that, then really we need to merge the two portfolios. So the, the skeptic can say, hey, your top 40 has been getting killed, so you want to sort of fold it into the winning fund. And, and, and I accept the criticism. That's a, you know, I, I'm going to deny it. I'm going to say it's not what I'm doing. But that is what the collective investment scheme industry does. If you've got a badly underperforming unit trust, you fold it into a winning tr uh, unit trust. It's called survivor bias. Absolutely, th that does happen. To me, it's just a process of it being simpler um, and, and, and making the whole process cleaner. The, the two portfolios never really thrilled me. I was always doing top 40. Midcap only came along when they bought that RMB uh, ETF into the space. And then the question is, but how many stocks do we buy? And so currently, it's 11. Five in the top 40, six in the in the in the in the in the in the mid cap. And the reason we have a little more in the mid cap is because firstly there's 60 shares there, um, and because they're a little more risky in that space. And I want to push it up to 15 stocks. And I'll tell you why. It reduces risk. Short answer. It absolutely reduces risk. Um, it, it makes it a whole lot easier in in, in the process. Um, you got 15 shares, one of them tanks, you've got less pain that you're, that you're taking. Uh, and if you're reducing risk, you're almost certainly, you know, 99 point, many nine times out of 100, you're reducing performance as well. But part of this is an evolution of a portfolio, which for me started as, as a fun thing I was doing when I was still at online share trading back in, in, in sort of 08, 09, back in those days, something which I brought across to just one lap, just as a concept of saying, you know, people want trading portfolios. He has one that works and also to prove simplicity. Um, but this is now taking, it's, it's gathering momentum. My two portfolios are 300,000 Rand between them, um, which which is, is, is not insignificant money. And we're chatting with some folks, and I know this has been going on for, going, ongoing for ages, to try and get these into baskets or funds or something like that. And part of that is, in a sense, is... is, is um, What's what I'm looking for? Uh, 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 professionalizing, for want of a really bad phrase, the, 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 the process. Hence, merge, top 100, 15 stocks. Charles, you say you just buy mid cap? Absolutely. So, I mean, that's the point. I mean, 
we, and when I say we, I'm using the royal we, as in Simon Brown slash just one lap, might go off and, and, and do this. And I haven't decided. We're three months away. Um, I'm, I'm keen on the feedback. Uh, tweet me at Simon PB or Simon at just one lap.com. I'm keen on the feedback. Let me know your thoughts. But there's nothing to say if, if you think it's a terrible idea or if you only want the mid caps, you do that. Um, the trick with the mid caps, and, and, and this is what ultimately happens with it, and is, is if you're only doing the mid cap, the mid cap does great until 2008, and it does incredibly badly then. If you started back here and you got all of that great, then the pullback is fine. You still went ahead and you're beating top 40. The problem is if you started here. And the question then is, well, where are we in the mid cap space? Honest answer, not a clue. I, I don't know where we are. You know, what I'm saying is, are we about to crash? Simply don't know. Question coming through is 15 stocks enough to be professional? So it is. Um, so you'll find your average unit trust has got anywhere between 40 to 100 stocks. I think that's far too many. 15 still means we're taking a small slice um, of, of the portfolio and saying we're going to really focus on just that slice of the portfolio. Um, and that's, that, that's, that's, that's quite concentrated. You will see folks who, who, who you know, have top 40 funds. And for example, Coronations Fund, they use top 50, but they buy 20 of the 50 stocks. They've got 40% of the stocks. Whereas here, we still only got 15% of the stocks. Uh, Matt, won't avoiding dividend stocks help returns? Um, Matt, that's a great question. And I'm honestly not sure. So short answer, so, so I, I hear what you say, because if I'm standing you correctly, if I'm not throw the question back at me. The trick is, is that I'm getting some return from the dividend on top because I'm getting it sitting in my, in my um, uh, uh, cash, but the cash is earning me what? 5%. So if I had low dividends, so maybe, so I hear what you say, intuitively, no disrespect, I'm not sure I like it. I think, you know, because then suddenly there's a whole bunch that go out, but it's something I'm going to just go have a look at and, and, and bounce that around and see it. Uh, Mohammed, can you use these type of stocks for a long-term portfolio? Uh, so it's not designed as a long-term portfolio, but certainly these are the shares with momentum. The, the point being, I suppose, what we're what we're really thinking about here is is you know how they're going to be doing in three, five, ten years time, and that's the tough one. And you know, some of when I buy my long-term stocks, I want really boring, really resilient type of stocks. Net one to me is a is a is a is a, is a flying stock that I would never want in a long-term portfolio. So there, there's my issue there. A question coming through, how, how would that change this year's picture? And that's a great question. So let's go, ah, uh, uh, wrong button. Um, let's go and have a look-see at how it will change this year's picture. So what we have here, so what we can see from here so what would have been the stocks? So we would still have Fortress B, we would still have PSG, uh, next would be Bright, then would be Capitec, Mondi, uh, Net, uh, Cap, Net One then come in, uh, Sapi, Naspas come in, uh, Capco and Rock come in. Um, so in truth, I think the question came from uh, Susan. In truth, Susan, we actually have the same 11 stocks. And I'll be honest, that surprised me. I didn't, so the, the top 11 remain the top 11. And I did not expect to see that. That that really, really did surprise me. What it would mean is that we would pull in a couple of others. So SAB, we wouldn't trade because of corporate activity. We got 38 from Steinhoff. So we would pick up Nepi, Resilient, uh, Steinhoff would come across for Distel, and then we would pick up uh, EOH. So there would be those extras. We would basically get Nepi Resilient to Stahl, EOH. Uh, that would be the four. Um, so Steinhoff, EOH wouldn't make it. So there would only be an extra four. I thought there might be a little more changing. What I'm saying, if I'm not making sense, is that I thought that, for example, number five on the list here, Capco, might be only number nine or ten on the list down here. That's not the case at all. So that is that is closer than I had thought from the process. So what I actually need to go and do, I'll put together the, the 100 stocks and let's go and, and, and crunch some numbers and have a look-see and, and see how it looks in, in, in that space. 
Lebo, ah, le, okay, so, sorry, Lebo, thank you. Uh, Lebo is just saying we, t, t, Lebo, she or he, I don't know if you boy or girl will support me regard, sorry, girl. Uh, Lebo says she'll support me regardless of, of how I do it. So, as I said, I'm not uh, beholden to this change. I've got a lot more thinking and data to do around it. I need to crunch a lot more numbers. I need to give it a lot more thought. Um, and, and if you've got thoughts, uh, let me know. If you're watching the video, Send me a tweet, send me an email. If you love now, send me a tweet, send me an email. Keen to hear what folks are, what, what your thoughts are around it. I'm not uh, uh, locked into it. It's just a thought. It's a thought that's been rolling in my head for a little while. And then when I saw that top 100 index pop up, I'm like, boom, that's it. You know, it just, I just got a sense that not in the short term, but in the five or 10 years time, it's going to be the index on the, on the JSC. Uh, so we buy the winners because trends tend to continue. We update quarterly. We don't worry about any fundamentals. We don't worry about any chart patterns. We just buy the winning stocks. As simple as that. This is the easiest trading system you're ever going to stumble across. Uh, Lebo, yes. So what I will do is also go and crunch the returns for previous years and see if there's a significant difference in the returns. If anything, I think it might drop down a bit. Although... What we did see is the extra stocks that we picked up, the four extra stocks we pick up, three of them came from the mid cap. So in truth, what we're going to see is a, a, a increase weighting to mid cap stocks. So whilst we reduce the risk a little bit, we might actually keep the return or even push it up a bit. Taxes and costs, real issue. We do updates. I tweet them out. I Facebook them from time to time. And then, of course, we do the monthly updates at blog. Uh, dot just one lap dot com. Uh, folks, if you've got any more questions, let's take one or two now. We are bumping up on the half past eight. I don't massively want to overrun, but if there's a question or two, we can take them. Cool. No questions through. Uh, no, uh, Leb was asking if this is my last event of the year. No, I have five more presentations. Durban tomorrow, IG on Wednesday, Standard Bank on Thursday, JSC on Monday, Standard Bank on Tuesday. Tuesday, 8 p.m., my year is over. That's it. Come back in January. Ladies and gents, appreciate your time this evening. Uh, thanks as always. Uh, Matt, next webinar is Wednesday, which is the IG Bootcamp, um, which is uh, Busting Market Myths. And then Monday, which is the 7th, so Wednesday the 2nd, Monday the 7th, we're doing the final JC Power Hour for the year. Um, and it is titled uh, Predictions for 2015. And I'll give you a slight little cheat. So those were the stocks that I picked. I didn't pick the index. That's my benchmark. Those were the stocks that I'd picked. And i got to say, um, I'm gobsmacked. I, I'm not a stock picker. I mean, I am many things, but I'm not a stock picker. And I'm gobsmacked that these stocks did so well. So put it this way, put serious, serious pressure on me to do it again. So that's uh, Monday the 7th. If you're in Josie, come around to the JC, 5.30 kickoff, drinks afterwards, come say how's it. Yeah, Matt, soothsayer, I, I'll be honest, the only one that was new here was Richmond, those I'd held. Um, I think I got lucky. <laughs> I think I got lucky. Hey, when you get lucky, you grab it with both hands. Of course, it puts serious pressure because now I've got to do it again, haven't I? Um, that's going to be the tough top part. Ladies and gents, really appreciate your time this evening. Uh, until next time, all the best. Cheers.